Hi Dragonflies! Do you have a watercolor sketchbook that is so beautiful that you're afraid to work in it? Or at least it's difficult to experiment and try new things that might not work out. But when you buy a more reasonably priced sketchbook, the paper doesn't behave the way you're used to. Of course, you could just put some postcards in a Ziploc bag and sketch on those, but it's nice to have an actual sketchbook sometimes. So in the next two videos, I'm going to show you four simple do-it-yourself sketchbooks that you can make using the paper that you normally paint on that are fast and easy and don't require knowledge of bookbinding. I'm going to show all of these examples starting from pieces of 9 by 12 paper because that seems to be a very common size for people to buy these days. If you normally buy full sheets of watercolor paper, you can tear them down to quarter sheets, which is a little bit bigger than 9 by 12, and you'll get the same little sketchbooks, just a little bit bigger. This first example is so simple, you might not feel like it even counts as a sketchbook, but stick with me because this sketchbook has some really nice features. For my example, I cut my 9 by 12 sheet in thirds both ways to get nine 3 by 4 inch cards, but you'll easily see that this adapts to any size paper you want to use. For my cover, I've just cut a strip out of an old painting that I wasn't happy with, or you could use just a plain piece of paper and decorate it however you like. All you need is something that wraps all the way around and a little bit extra to tuck in. And then I just put a few binder clips on the end to hold it together and it opens up like a matchbook. So I can work on it vertically like this, or I can turn it sideways and work on it like this. Everything's held together. There's no dropping things or fumbling around while I'm in the field, but it's not permanently bound yet. So I can carry just enough pages for that day's sketching, take out the pages and rearrange them, remove sketches I'm not happy with, and then when I'm ready to bind it more permanently, what I'm going to do is punch holes in both the pages and the cover, and then we're going to bind it using screw posts like scrapbookers use. These also you can usually find in hobby stores, although not necessarily in really super short lengths like I'm using for this little example. Or you can order them online. They come in many different lengths all the way from, I think these are quarter inch to a couple of inches long. So you can bind as many or as few pages as you like. And all you need to do is you put one end of the binding post in through the holes and then the other end has a little screw threading on it and you just screw it in. And now you have a more permanent binding, although you still can unscrew them and change your mind, rearrange things later if you like. Of course, you don't have to use the binder clips at all. You can use the screw posts right from the beginning. But what I like to do is use the binder clips for carrying things around. And then when I know how many pages I want to put together into a whole book, say, for example, when I've finished a trip and I've reorganized things, then I can figure out what length screw posts I need. But you can also just standardize and say, I'm going to make a book with 24 pages and buy screw posts for that length. If you're working with larger pages, you might choose to use three or four screw posts. And if you're making kind of a special book, maybe from a trip, you might choose to make a more conventional cover instead of this matchbook fold. In the next video, I'll show you an example of that, plus a really pretty alternate binding that you can use if you're ready to bind a book more permanently and don't need to be able to open up the screw posts and rearrange things anymore. The next example for this video is a little accordion fold sketchbook. These don't require any bookbinding skills, just a little bit of gluing. The pages turn more or less like an ordinary little book, but when you get to the end, you flip it over and turn them the other way. For this one, you'll start by cutting your paper lengthwise into three strips. They'll each be three inches wide by 12 inches long. Next, we'll fold each strip into one of these little accordion sections. All you need to do is fold it in half and then fold the top and bottom back towards the fold so you get a little accordion like this. And you can make as many of these as you like. 
And one of the nice features of this type of book is you can work on just one page like this, holding it in your hand. You can open it up and do a landscape format, or you can even have a really wide panorama. Now what we'll do is put several of these together to make our book. To do that, I'll put two sections down next to each other, line them up, and just put a piece of tape along this join. It helps to leave just a little gap in between so that the pages will fold more easily. And I usually tape both the front and the back and then just trim off any excess tape. I'm just using the usual half inch masking tape I use to tape down paintings or mask things off. If you want to be a little more archival, you can buy archival or acid free half inch artist tape but I'm trying to not make these sketchbooks too precious, so I'm just using what I have in my studio. Once you've put together three or four of them, you'll have a little book like this, which you could use just like this, but I like to put a little cover on it. Now for my cover, I cut a strip from a failed painting on paper that's the same size that I'm using to make my sketchbook. So nine by 12 paper, cut a strip from a nine by 12 painting, quarter sheet paper, cut a strip from a quarter sheet painting. If you don't happen to have a painting you want to cut up, you can just use a plain 9 by 12 strip, decorate it however you like, or you can use another type of paper. Anything you think is sturdy enough to stand up to being carried around. This next step is totally optional, but since I live in kind of a wet environment, I like to waterproof my covers a little bit with some Dorland's Wax Medium. You can buy this in most hobby stores, and it's very easy to apply. You just put a little on your finger and rub it into the paper. You can feel where it's going and when you need to get a little bit more. And it creates a sort of a waxy surface that will protect the paper from moisture. You could also use a golden cold wax medium or Ranger micro glaze. Those are basically the same thing. Or you could spray it with an acrylic spray from the hardware store. Now it's time to glue on our cover. I'm using acrylic gel medium because that's what I have. You could use Elmer's glue, any kind of book glue, acrylic mediums, basically whatever glue you have on hand. And I'm going to apply the glue to a six inch section of my cover. It's going to wrap around both sides of that first page. I'll wipe off any excess at the fold here, and then I'll leave it to dry with this other part of the cover open, maybe weighted down with a book or something to make sure that I get a good bond. And then I've just made a little closure with a stick on Velcro dots, or you could just trim the back cover even with the front and not have that closure. So there are two tiny sketchbooks to get you started. Obviously you could make these any size you want, but sometimes a tiny sketchbook is a nice way to reduce stress. You don't have to have a lot of time because you can't make a very big sketch. So give these a try and come back next time to see two more super easy do-it-yourself stress-free sketchbooks.